Hello everybody, my name is Miss Alyssa from Way Public Library and today I have another art project to share with you. Today we will be making paper mushrooms, a bit like this one, and to tie in with our craft we're going to be reading a book about gnomes. Before we do our book, let me just talk about some of the supplies you're going to need for our craft. Mostly, most importantly, you're just going to need paper. If you can get some construction paper in a variety of colors, that would be nice. Uh, whatever colors you want to make your mushroom and then maybe some green for the grass. But if you don't have construction paper, that's okay. You can just use white paper and color it with crayons or markers. Uh, besides the paper, you're also going to need scissors because you're going to need to cut this in a couple different shapes. You're going to need to cut the circles for the top of the mushroom and for the polka dots and then the bottom of the grass. So there's a lot of cutting to do with the scissors. And then you're going to need something to hold the mushroom together. So you can use glue, like a glue stick, or tape, like some simple clear scotch tape would be nice. If you have both of those things, that would also be good. That would probably be best, but you could pick either or. So that's all you're gonna need for our craft. And paper in a variety of colors, or something to color your paper, scissors, and glue stick, and tape. And that's all. But before I can give you all the instructions for our mushrooms, we're going to read a story together. This book is called Go Big or Go Gnome by Kirsten Mayer. This is Albert the Gnome. You can call him Al. Al lives in a hollowed out mushroom cap with a roof of pinecone shingles and a front door made of a sturdy acorn top. Al works in a garden with other gnomes. Melvin sweeps up sticks and stones. Earl rakes up rows of very small rocks. Harold raggles wiggly worms. Cliff bathes the birds and fills the fountain. Bartleby has dandelion duty, fluffing the fluff. Harold, oh, sorry, Al takes care of the shrubbery. There's Al trimming a leaf here and there to keep it tidy. His best friend Norm sweeps up after him. See how all these busy gnomes have imperial beards and illustrious mustaches? All of them do, except Al. He tries and tries, but he can't grow a single whisker on his face. It's too bad for Al because the biggest event of the year for gnomes is the B.I.G., the Beards International Gnomathon. Every gnome in the garden grooms and prunes, primps and crimps to win trophies for longest beard, bushiest beard, and overall best beard. Every gnome except Al. This really gets my goatee, says Norm. It's not fair for you to be left out. Al strokes his smooth chin thoughtfully. Hmm. I have an idea, says Al. Let's see what he's gonna do. This is Engelbert the Gnome, the Grand Master Judge of Whiskers. It takes a lot to impress old Engelbert. The first contest is for longest beard. Gnomes line up to see whose scruff is the most inchworms long. Al steps up next, and he has a beautiful, long white beard. It's so light and fluffy that it floats in the air. Well, well, what do we have here? Did El Albert finally sprout some whiskers? Asked Engelbert, chuckling. When the old gnome reaches in for a closer look, something tickles his nose. He lets out a great big ah-choo, and dozens of tiny white butterflies flutter away. False beard, roars Engelbert. 
The next competition is for Bushiest Beard. Al's beard is now a unique reddish color and very bushy. Did that beard just twitch? asked the old gnome. Oh no, sir, I just wiggled my chin, Al says. Suddenly, there's a chitter under Al's cap. Engelbert whisks it off and uncovers a squirrel. False beard, he roars. Norm smushes some moss onto Al's face, but it just plops to the ground. It's no use, says Al. I'm just a boring, barefaced gnome. I'll never win longest or bushiest or overall best beard. I'll never be a winner, not ever. Al goes home and trims some shrubbery to keep himself busy. A little while later, Norm runs up in a panic. Al, Al, I need your help. I got tree sap in my beard and now it's stuck, he says. I'll never win best beard tomorrow. Can you fix it? Al goes to work. He snips and clips all the tree sap out of his friend's beard. Then he trims some more. There you go, I did what I could, says Al. It's a little different. Norm runs to a bird bath to look at his reflection in the water. His new beard looks gnome-tastic. Wow, Norm, that's some beard you have there, says Bertleby. It's a real zinger, says Cliff. Where'd you get it? Al trimmed my beard for me. Now I'll win best beard for sure. Norm shouts as he jumps up and down. Sure it's real? asks Melvin, giving it a yank. Maybe I should get a beard trim from Al too, wonders Harold. What last one there is a rotten acorn, cries Earl as he takes off running. The next morning, Al wakes up and shuffles outside. He's shocked to see a long line of gnomes waiting in front of his house. Look, Al, Norm says, every gnome wants you to trim their beards too. I better get started. It will be a close shave to get everyone ready in time. Later that day, a parade of gnomes strut through the garden, showing off an array of amazing beards. Lots of different beards in there. Ooh, it looks like Al's done a pretty good job. Engelbert can't believe his eyes. Fancy feathers. Goodness grapeness. Bristles and banjos. Whimsy and whiskers. Engelbert collapses his hand to silence the cloud. Every beard here today is truly special. I have never seen anything like it in the history of the B.I.G. I declare the competition for best beard to be a 30-way tie. Every gnome wins. Engelbert walks over to Al and hands him a trophy. Albert you are getting a special prize for bringing beards to a new level and raising the handlebar for this competition. You are the winner of the first award for best barber. Every gnome cheers as loudly as they can. Albert the gnome is the winner. After much celebrating, Al walks home he thinks about where to put his new trophy. He doesn't even notice that his light is on and the acorn door is slightly open. Hi, I'm Ginger. I was wondering, could you give me a haircut? The end. Now I'm gonna show you every step that you need to make 
to create your own mushroom similar to the one I've got here. Um, I use just a regular brown color so it looks a little bit like a real mushroom. Uh, but you can go ahead and pick out what color you want to make your mushroom now because our first step is to pick out our different paper. If you do have colored paper, if you've just got white paper, that's fine too. Um, so go ahead and pick what colors you want your mushroom to be. You're going to need a color for the top of the mushroom, for the base of the mushroom, and for the ground that it sits on. So probably green for the ground. Um, so go ahead and pick out those colors with all the paper options you have at home, or just pull out your white paper and grab your scissors, like so, because our next step is to start it, cutting out a couple different shapes. The first shape you're going to need is a circle for the top of your mushroom. The example I'm going to make right now is of a classic red mushroom with white polka dots. You've probably seen those before. It looks a little bit like Al's house in the book that we just finished. So we'll make a, a classic red and white mushroom. So I've got the red top of it here. I've cut a circle that is about five inches in diameter, about five inches here. Um, if you want to make one the same size as me, that would be five inches, but you can make any size you want. So I've cut a circle like this, and then I also cut, you, can you see I've got like a little bit of a cut right down the middle. And actually it doesn't go all the way through, it only goes halfway, so it stops about here. I've cut down to about there, just one cut, and we're going to need this later to make our flat circle into a slight cone for the top of our mushroom. So cut out a circle in whatever size you want your mushroom to be, and then cut a little slit halfway through, just like that. And the next thing you're going to want to cut is the bottom of the mushroom that the circle is going to sit on top of. Uh, so you're probably going to want to cut like a a rectangle or a square and again this depends on how big you want your mushroom to be so I don't know I don't know what size you want to cut yours mine is let me see here mine is five inches tall about five and a half wide uh, so that's how much I've cut this one, but you can use any size. In fact, instead of using this step that I'm about to show you, this piece of paper here, if you don't want to cut this piece of paper, you could always use a craft tube, like a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll. You can use that instead of this. Uh, so grab one of those if you prefer, or cut out a square of paper, whatever color you want your base to be. And once you've cut out the square, this one's five by five and a half, then you want to make little cuts along the top and the bottom. This is gonna be a little hard to see on the camera, but along the tip top here, I have cut about half an inch in. I've cut here and here and here and here all along the top. And I tried to keep them about the same length of cut, about an inch, all along the top. And I did the same thing on the bottom. I cut here, and here, and here, and here, all along. That is needed to help hold our mushroom in place. We're going to use these as kind of like the legs to the mushroom, like a root to the mushroom, to hold them in, in spot. Uh, so you're going to need to cut out your rectangle and those little cuts along the top, 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 and the bottom, bottom, bottom of your piece of paper. And the next thing you're going to want to cut out is a base, a bottom for the mushroom to stand on. So I just used some green paper and cut a random little shape out of green. So it looks a little bit like a patch of grass. So you could just do a circle or a square or a random shape like what, what I've done here. Um, so that's my bottom that the mushroom's going to stand on. And you're also going to want to cut out tiny circles for our polka dots. Actually, I've already got some right here. 
So I've cut out just some standard white polka dots for my mushroom this time. So you can do whatever color you want or a variety of colors. I've actually, I've done an example of a mushroom with rainbow spots that I'll show you at the end of the video. Uh, but the one I'm gonna make with you right now has white spots. So I've cut out lots of tiny white circles for this mushroom. Now let's start assembling everything. So let's move that ruler out of the way. I'm gonna need my tape and my glue. Won't need my scissors anymore, so we'll set those aside. All right, let's start with step number one. Let's move that out of the way so you can see. First step of assembling the mushroom. Now that we've cut out all the different pieces, we want to start gluing our polka dots on the very top of the mushroom. So get out your glue stick and glue, glue, glue. There's a polka dot there. And polka dot there. Just like this. Let's see, I'm trying to do it quickly. You don't have to do it this quickly at home. And you probably shouldn't because you want to make sure you're using enough glue so it will stay all together at the end. Um, so there's no need to rush through it. I just don't want to make the video too long. So I'm doing it nice and quick. I'm putting polka dots on my red mushroom. Down there. And I think I want one more medium size polka dot up here. And then I'm going to stop because I don't want to fill the mushroom with polka dots because I'm going to turn like this. I'm going to fold one piece of paper over the other piece a little bit so that it makes the cone shape that we talked about, right? Uh, so I've just folded it over, but actually I need to add some glue to hold it in place. So let's glue, glue, glue here on my piece of paper. Don't be shy with the glue at this part. But we want our mushroom to hold together. So I glue, glue, glued, and now I'm overlapping it there, pushing down, and I'm gonna hold it, hold it in place while it dries just a little bit. So I'm just gonna hold it briefly. If you were using tape instead of glue, you could put a bit of tape right here at this seam. But I've used glue, so let me just see if it's holding. It seems to be holding okay. So now we've got the top of our mushroom. Not so bad, huh? The next step is the circle that the mushroom top is gonna stand on. Right here's where the top's gonna go and this part's gonna be the ground. Uh, so this is the part that could be a toilet paper roll or a craft tube if you have any. But mine's a piece of paper. So I have rolled it up into a cylinder like this. And now I'm gonna need to hold it in place with some tape. This part, I think it would be much better to use tape instead of glue. Um, glue, it's gonna take a while to dry. And there's a lot of tension here where it wants to unfold and become a rectangle again. So tape will hold stronger to now keep it as a cylinder, like this. Now that I've taped it up, so it's going to stand like this. Now I'm going to bend down. Remember those little cuts we did at the top and at the bottom? We're going to bend them like little tabs. Bend them over and down like this, like that, or on the whole top and the whole bottom. So bend 
bending out, outward. Like that, like that. And then on this side, you need to do the same thing on both sides. Just like that okay so now it's got that on both ends and now you want to hold it in your hand like this and get glue on all the little tabs all the way around one side I think it's easiest to just do this in your hand and hold it like this and then glue all the way around um, you're gonna get a little glue on your fingers but it's okay it will wash off so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Glue each little tab. Glue, glue, glue. All the way around. Use plenty of glue. Don't be shy. Because we want our mushroom to be stable and secure on the piece of grass. But what we're pretending is a piece of grass. That we're going to push down. I'm just gonna put mine right in the middle. So we put the glue on and then put it right onto the grass, pushing those little tabs down again because we want them to dry in the right spot like that. So we've done that to the grass and now it's time to do the top here for the top of our mushroom. So there's our glue stick. We're gonna glue, glue, glue the tabs. If you are using tape instead of glue, you could put little rolls of tape on, each, on a couple of the tabs. You wouldn't need to put lots of tape. Um, so you could put tape on the top here instead. But I'm just gonna use glue, 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 glue. And I'm actually gonna put the cap on my glue stick because I think I'm all done with it. And push the top of your mushroom down onto those tabs that you just put glue on. Push, 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 and hold it there while it's drying a little bit. It doesn't take very long for glue sticks to dry. So I'm just gonna hold it a little bit. And, oops. Hold that. I'm holding the tabs underneath, letting it dry. There it goes. That's a little bit better. So there's our little mushroom, our red spotted mushroom. You could make any different colors at home. You could make lots of different ones like this and put them around a room and decorate. I think they look pretty neat. And they tie in very well with our summer reading theme, which was all about imagine your stories and imagination and fairy tales. So mushrooms tie in well with that. I hope you enjoyed our mushroom craft and our gnome book today. Here are the other examples of mushrooms I made where I made a rainbow mushroom and a smaller purple one. And there's our red one that we just finished. So that's actually all I've got for you to do. That's the whole craft and you're all done now. So I hope to see some examples of mushrooms you've made yourself and I hope you enjoyed our craft. I'll see you next time. Bye!